Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing AMD's plans for an RDNA 2 refresh because they do indeed seem to be true. So a quick update in case you missed it. A few days ago, we covered the fact that Grayman on Twitter, who is a well-known leaker, had basically stated that his sources had told him that AMD were planning a refresh of RDNA 2, which would, amongst other things, include faster memory. So when it comes to uh, RX 6000 series cards, they use varying speeds of GDDR6 memory, but they bolster this performance by also adding, of course, the Infinity cache. But yeah, even myself, I mentioned several times at this point on the channel that I had heard about a refresh, but now there's a very interesting rumor that's been circulating from Chip Hell. Well-known leaker WJM, I'll of course link his post in the description, had also said that he's been hearing exactly the same thing, and furthermore, the naming scheme could also be quite similar to what AMD have employed with their mobile series of cards as well. So, Na'Vi 23 will remain identical, at least according to this information, but we will see bumps in specifications for Na'Vi 21 and 22. So that, of course, would mean the highest-end SKUs as well as the mid-range SKUs from AMD. Which does make sense when you think that cards like the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, the 3090 Ti, and so on and so on are being released from NVIDIA. And there's also rumors that we'll see refreshes of SKUs like the 3070 derivatives as well. So from a competitive standpoint, AMD doing this does make sense. Furthermore, the alleged release date is going to be Q2, which honestly is a little earlier than I was expecting, but... Again, from a competitive standpoint, given that NVIDIA have already kind of fired its load, so to speak, it would mean that AMD would be on the back foot for the least amount of time possible. Just to reiterate my point from a few days ago, though, the only concern I have with these cards, other than possibly an increased MSRP, but I don't know that, so hold fire on any accusations on increased price uh, as of right now, because we don't know, my major concern is that this would theoretically mean these cards would be more beneficial to miners because ultimately of course memory bandwidth for mining something like ethereum is extremely important with that said given that ethereum at some point this year is allegedly going to become proof of stake it may not matter so much but honestly they have been saying that ethereum is going to move to proof of stake for absolutely forever at this point and who knows when and if it will actually happen well it will happen but Goodness knows if it will happen this year or not. Now, if you think of it from pure bandwidth perspective, we're probably not going to be seeing a massive uptick in performance. I mean, it's quite difficult to know, and it's also going to be heavily dependent upon the game slash application you're running. It could be 5%, 10%, depending on the clock frequency. The uh, rumor is that it's going to be 18 Gbps memory, which is a small uptick depending, again, on the model. However... I personally have been hearing that it could also be on the 6NM process and possibly higher clock frequencies, but as always, plans can change. It'll be very interesting if this is true because it's, I mean, let's, let, let's just say best case scenario here, guys. Let's say it's about a 10% improvement in performance. It would probably be enough to help fend off the RTX 30 series of cards, or more accurately anyway, the refresh from NVIDIA, because obviously this does mean that cards like the 3080 12 gigabyte and the 3090 Ti or Ti or whatever you want to say, they're going to basically be a little bit higher now in the benchmarks. And I also suspect it could be a way for AMD to increase MSRP. I mean, <laughs> not that MSRP is particularly meaningful at this point anyway. Oh, and a small piece of AMD news. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try not to laugh for this one. So one of the, you know, big things AMD have been pushing is VRAM. And this has particularly been prevalent for RDNA 2 because, you know, I love the RTX 3080, but in my personal opinion, um, I'm curious to hear what you guys think actually on this. I think it should have had more VRAM right it should have had at least in my opinion 12 gigabytes but in general 10 is enough for most games now but AMD have been making an awfully big deal of you know their cards having 16 gigabytes of memory and of course throughout the stack their cards typically having more and have basically put out multiple blog posts actually 
in the you know in the past saying that four gigabytes isn't enough. Well, I'm gonna give credit to Kit. I'm sorry. I want to give credit to Kit Guru here. <laughs> Basically, they've it's been scrubbing the posts that uh, four gigabytes is not enough for games, right as the 6500 XT launches. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's absolutely brilliant. I mean, that that's actually that's that's actually brilliant. Um, you know, being honest. Um, I think four gigabytes is going to be enough for like 1080p gaming, to be real with you. Um, and it does also have the benefit, of course, of not being so appealing to minors. So that is obviously a good thing because if they had loaded this with like six or eight gigs of memory, let's just be honest, minors would buy it even if the hash rate wasn't brilliant. So I do understand it from that perspective, but it is kind of funny to watch them basically have to be like, oops. <laughs> And now remove, you know, these posts. And of course, NVIDIA, all these companies are pretty much guilty of doing kind of similar things in the past. But it is kind of funny. Um, I'm not going to really mention the performance of the 6500 XT here. I didn't personally uh, particularly ask to get a 6500 XT because I didn't really think it was that interesting of a product. Um, I did have a look at a couple of reviews. And um, yeah... I uh, don't really have much to say on it. Like, you guys have probably seen the reviews by now. The the PCIe bandwidth should have been, well, yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say. <laughs> but uh, anyway, moving on to some very interesting NVIDIA news. So I'm sure most of you guys know that uh, the ARM deal for NVIDIA has been like an ongoing battle for Jensen and the rest of the team. And there was actually an update to this that I didn't bother to cover, but essentially... Apparently, ARM actually approached NVIDIA concerning the purchase. Obviously, I don't know whether that's true, but that's apparently the story from both ARM and NVIDIA, as obviously they are um, trying to fight off the fact that uh, basically the UK government aren't particularly happy at the purchase of uh, ARM by NVIDIA. However, there is still an update. In my personal opinion, this could be really interesting from NVIDIA, and that is concerning the developments of processors. So this is going to be a new R&D group research and development, of course, which is going to be in Israel. And there are going to be a number of new hires which are going to be, of course, hitting up this. So, yeah, um, obviously, last year, which is, of course, 2021 now, um, we actually saw Jensen announce a new ARM-based processor, and it was called Grace. And this uh, processor is going to be launching in 2023. Uh, Michael, who is NVIDIA's CTO, said that Israel, with its unique wealth of talent, is a key player in the global tech ecosystem, and we are excited to be creating new CPU group here. We are looking forward to further growing our local R&D activities, both in this area and an extensive work supporting of local e ecosystems, excuse me, uh, through unique programs for startups and developers. So, to me, it's going to be interesting to see what direction NVIDIA goes in the longer run, because clearly, you know, NVIDIA's CPU efforts, let's say, have been, um, you know, already kind of shown off to a degree, but there's a lot of room in the future. Like, I, I can't even remember when I reported this last year, but, you know, one of the things I had been hearing is that NVIDIA had been screwing around a little bit. This is a long time ago, so this is old news. But I had heard that basically NVIDIA were kind of researching its own processors based on ARM. And basically it had gotten games that were essentially like, I think it was Call of Duty, running with like hardware-based ray tracing on. Um, and it was, you know, I, I don't think we're going to see NVIDIA release x86 processors necessarily to compete with something like Intel but or at least to be clear here in the desktop arena anytime soon but yeah I mean obviously from the standpoint of Nvidia having a series of processors and systems that it can tightly control are going to be extremely beneficial the other I guess perspective from Nvidia is that now you have Intel being, you know, the creator of its own GPUs as well, which, you know, to reiterate the thing I've said like a hundred times at this point, one of the internal goals of Intel graphics is to basically make Intel graphics like 
for its discrete GPUs, by the way, for mobile, like the kind of the, the default option to really push that with a lot of its partners. So that would be, and not specifically, but just for example, you know, Dell's or uh, HP or whomever. And it kind of makes sense also when you think that AMD have much the same capabilities. So obviously Intel and AMD are gonna be wanting to push like I plus I or A plus A, respectively. So from NVIDIA's standpoint there, you know, there is a lot of uh, potential loss of revenue just for laptops. So it will be interesting to see how all of this plays out in the longer run. Um, but clearly it also has massive ramifications as well for like data center and AI, self-driving cars, all of that type of thing. I will be very curious to see what happens. I mean, ultimately, this division is not going to suddenly start creating processes tomorrow. Like, even if we were to fast forward to, like, end of 2023, it's not like the... Pro which, obviously, at that point, the group would have been well-established and all of this stuff. It's not like suddenly, you know, things would start happening. Like, it's going to take a long time for the, the fruits of their labors to start to come to the market. But obviously, with a company like NVIDIA, AMD, and so on, they are planning for roadmaps like three or five years in the future. So uh, I suspect that the market at that point is going to be really different. Also, real quick, guys, Microsoft has purchased Activision Blizzard. Now, I'm sure most of you know this already. It was massive news, of course. It's probably about the biggest news in gaming for quite a long while i mean they paid almost 69 billion us dollars it was like 68.7 uh to be precise which is an absolutely ridiculous sum and it kind of makes what they paid for zenimax look like chump change um and obviously this has made absolutely huge waves in the gaming industry um at the moment we don't really know a whole lot what this means for games coming onto the PlayStation, for example, there have been statements from Phil Spencer and so on that they, they want communities who have, you know, been enjoying Activision games to still enjoy those games. But what does that mean? It's a very wishy-washy statement. Um, does it mean, for example, the new Call of Duties are going to release day one on the PlayStation 5 or whatever? Honestly, no one knows. And I suspect that, to be honest, they're still probably planning some things internally as well. It's such a huge amount of money. I suspect that Microsoft systems will at least get a preference. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a weird time in the industry. The only positive from my perspective, and I don't really cover gaming stuff that much anymore, but, you know, with all of the crap put it a finer point on it there's been happening at Activision Blizzard with Bobby and you know, hopefully you know Microsoft will be able to clean that up and maybe they will also be able to make you know some of the games that to be honest have kind of suffered recently I won't list them all because you all know what they are but you know Activision Blizzard you know from my perspective um Blizzard in particular were a company that just continued to make incredible experiences when I was growing up and even games like um what was it Blackthorn or Battlethorn I can't remember the exact name it's so long since I played that damn game but it, it was a very it was a title that I played like way back in the day on my friend's like 486 system and it's just kind of crazy that um you know we've come so far so I'm hoping that Microsoft's purchase will clean up the studio and maybe that could be a positive um but i think honestly we're still way too early possibly we'll know more by the time e3 rolls around that's my and you know what to be honest i'm kind of surprised that they announced it just out of nowhere i guess they just wanted to start the year strong i'll be interested as well to see what sony nintendo i don't think nintendo will do too much to be honest to counter it because let's face it nintendo have like multiple money printing machines anyway with their own ips but i'll be interested to see what sony announce in the future and also if microsoft have any additional uh, purchases in their back pocket um with that said I am going to let you all go. Um, apologies for seeming a little bit off in this video. I'm just trying to recover from a plague. It like just, I don't know, this plague thing, it's not, you know, it's not the co, it's, it's not the COVID. Um, I have no idea what it is, but it's just kind of like absolutely wrecking my energy. So I'm a little bit out of it, but um, I, I'll, I'll make it through. With that said, thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.